and welcome to Yoga Studio Satya's yoga practice for the first day of your cleanse. This is a gentle hip opening and twisting practice. Twists tend to center us to draw all of our toxins to the midline where our main digestive tract is, where our um, main ability to purge those toxins is. And then also uh, hip openers tend to increase a pana vayu, which is the downward flowing energy. It's the downward flowing quality of uh, the wind element, which helps to carry our toxins out. So physical elimination, going number two, is one of the best ways to cleanse your body, and it's one of the first ways that you'll notice cleansing happening as a process in your body. And so today's practice for the, for the first session is going to be gentle to kind of ease you into it and um, bring us all into the same page. Great. All right, let's begin with a comfortable seat and we'll do inward spiral. For those of you who don't know what that is, take your inner thigh and turn it downward and then sit on it. Take the other inner thigh, turn it downward and then sit on it. Sit tall, spine elongated, shoulders up and back. Close your eyes and breathe. Gently elongate that outward retention of breath. Don't wait so long that you're gasping for the inhale. Place your hands together in front of your heart. Set your intention for this practice to allow it to cleanse you. For us to get out of the way of our body's own natural cleansing processes. We'll open our practice with one ohm. Release your breath. Enjoy your inhale. to a neutral position and we'll thread the needle. Take your left arm out to the side. As you exhale, thread it behind the other hand. Twist, come onto 
your shoulder and hold that twist. Come onto your right fingertips and draw your elbow deep in so your whole upper arm bone plugs into that armpit a little deeper. And then come back up. Other side. Open your right arm to the side. And as you exhale, thread through. together, sit on or towards your heels. If you have knee issues and this is not a resting pose for you, feel free, feel free to find your own. And you just stretch forward and lay down in between your knees. This is your resting pose. You can come and spend as much time in this position as you need to during today's practice or any of the practices in this series. Come back to all fours, and then we'll begin. Join your toes under, lift your hips up and back. This is downward facing dog. Double check the length. Come forward to plank, which is the top of a push up. Your plank should be the same size as your downward facing dog. So if you have to lengthen out your stance to get a good plank, leave your hands and feet where they are. Lift your high knee up and back. Come into downward facing dog. Good. Bend your knees, tilt your sit bones way to the ceiling, and feel that outward stretch across your lower back. Tone your belly button towards your spine, and allow your tailbone to scoop into the space that you just made. down at your feet, make sure they're hip width apart so your thigh bones are parallel to each other. Lift your toes up, of course feet on the same starting line and parallel to each other. Hug your inner thighs toward each other and then stick your butt up. There we go. So you're going to feel a little bit like the girl on the mud flap of all the trucks. The back arch with the rear end sticking out. What we're trying to get is a nice opening stretch right there in the lower back. If you look down at your toes and let the tops of your thigh bones go back, you'll start to feel that opening. You'll also notice a hollowness right there in the um, top of your thigh, right in the crease of your hip. Keep that, engage your belly, and scoop your tailbone into the space you just made. We did that earlier. Good, keep that, bring your inhale up. Take your wrist and stretch to one side. Come back up. Take the other wrist, stretch to the other side. Good. This time let's emphasize that downward energy, that apana vayu. Good. So from your kidneys, draw it with your belly muscles into your kidneys and press from the kidneys down into your hips, down from your hips, down your thigh bones, down your shin bones, down to the four corners of your feet and into the ground. Feel yourself planted and rooted very deeply. Good. Keep that. So from here down, we're rooted into the ground. And inhale, stretch out of that rootedness. Keep rooting, especially 
into the left foot, grab your left wrist and arc over to the right. Feel the earth beneath your feet. Feel its steadiness. Good, come on up. And go the other way. Root deeply from your abdominals into your kidneys and all the way down into the earth and pull the other direction. So when we're studying uh, electronic circuits, we learn that the earth is a sink. That anything we need to send there, positive charges, negative charges, everything, can go into that earth and be grounded. And it's the same thing with our bodies. All of our excess energy can go into the earth and be grounded and become neutral there. Whether it's too much, too little, too whatever, too hot, too cold, can ground into the sink of the earth. Inhale, stretch up. Feel the contrast between your lifted hands and your rooted steady feet. Good. Exhale, bow. Again, in this bow position, draw your abdominals into your kidneys and press kidneys, hips, down the thigh bones, into the feet, and press the earth. Right? Don't just stand on it with gravity, but actively push with your muscles down into the earth. Awesome. Inhale, stretch your spine. Exhale, step back. Now we're facing up one more time. This is one of my favorite hip openers and a great way to warm up the hip joints. Step forward with your right leg into high lunge. Here's the easy way. Knees on the mat. Grab your right leg. Swing it up there with your hand. Straighten your back knee. And if you're a little more flexible than that, you can lift your belly muscles and step all the way forward. Get as close as you can and then use your hand to get you full length foot between the hand. Aim for 90 degrees in the front knee, straight in the back knee. Good. Lift your hips up, engage your tummy muscles, keep your chest low, pivot all the way. So now we're in high lunge facing the opposite direction and the opposite leg will be in front. Do it again. Pivot. Now you're in the same high lunge that you started in with your right foot in front. Good. Step back to downward facing dog. You can do that in as many movements as it takes. Again, step forward with your left foot this time into high lunge. As many movements as it takes. Pivot. Now you're in high lunge facing the back of your mat with your right foot in front. Pivot again. Back where you started. This time, step forward. Draw into your kidneys and root down the back side of your body. Press into your feet. Press so strongly from your abdominals into your kidneys and down into the earth that your upper body floats upward. Exhale, hands together. Inhale, take a breath. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bow. Lengthen your spine. Step back to downward facing dog. Yeah. Bring your knees to the mat for all fours. Again, cushion any time you need to. Bring your left foot forward. With your knee on the ground, this is called low lunge. Hands on either side of your foot. Good. Now we're just going to shift. Rock back. Stick out your butt. And then stick your butt out to the left. It's really easy. So you want to feel that sitting bone or your ischial tuberosity moving out to the left. And then do the same thing on the right. Stick your butt bone out to the right. And then left. And then right. And then left. And then right. And then both together. Good. Now engage your belly and ground again. Belly muscles into the kidneys. From your kidneys, push down into that foot and this foot and ground the pose more fully. Bend the front knee. Excellent. Come to the inside of your front leg. Engage your belly muscles so your spine rounds forward and bow. Inhale, come up. Swing your leg back to all fours. Swing the other leg forward. Same thing. Stick your butt out to the right. Stick your butt out to the left. Butt out to the right. Butt out to the left. And right. And left. 
Here it comes. Take it out both directions and then ground. Belly into kidneys. Kidneys press down into that foot and this foot. Actively push your energy down into the ground. Good. Draw your belly button in a little bit deeper. Curve your spine on the inside of your front leg and bow forward. So that curve doesn't come from sticking your head out in front of your chest. It comes from using your abs and bending your spine into a C. Swing your leg back, all fours. Go to the second, first side again. <laughs> Left foot in front, stick your butt out, widen it to both sides, and ground from your belly to your kidneys all the way to the earth. Good, lunge way forward. Now all of our toes are going to turn out. It's left foot in front, so all of your toes turn to the left. Turn your front toes out to the left. Turn your back toes out to the left on the pinky toe side of my foot. And let your right hip come all the way down to the mat. Or as close to the mat as you can get it. Sit tall, reach out with your left hand, and look toward the back of your mat. If you're a little more flexible, you can look over your left shoulder and deepen the twist of the torso. Then come all the way back. Switch feet. Stick your butt out. Both sides at once. Ground, so we're rooting from the abs into the kidneys and all the way down, lunge forward. Turn your toes right foot in front, so toward the right. Sit on your right hip. Reach back with your right hand. Go into the twist, and if you want, look over your right shoulder and deepen that twist. Come back to the center, back to all fours. Take a break in child's pose. If you want to take a pause in the video, take a little bit longer break, feel free to hit pause and break as long as you need to. As you're ready, come out of child's pose. Make your way to standing forward fold. Move through downward facing dog. Step forward in between your hands. Root again into your kidneys and down. Pressing your water element of your kidneys down through the lines of your bones into the earth. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, hands together. Inhale, take a breath. Take a wide stance facing sideways on your mat. Bend your knees slightly. Press your thigh bones back. Lift your toes and dig in with the inner edges of your feet to bring more muscular energy to the inside of your thighs. And then roll those powerful inner thighs to the back. Allow your sitting bones to move back and tilt them upwards. Then engage your abdominals without tilting those sitting bones downward. And bow forward again. This is Prasarta Padottanasana, or wide leg forward fold. Bring your torso over to your right foot and stretch towards your right leg. Bring your torso over towards your left foot, stretch towards your left leg. Come back to the middle. Extend this pose into gazing pose, the extended version of the pose. Soften your upper back and let your arm bones ground into your back. Relax your neck. Engage your abdominal muscles. Root into your water and down from your kidneys into your feet. And then curl the opposite direction with your upper body. Curl into the pose and bring your head in between your feet. Inhale, extend. Take your feet from the parallel stance where they are to a turn out stance. Bend your knees into a powerful squat, the goddess. Bring your hands to your knees and create a hug. Knees hug inward into your hands and press your hands outward into your knees. Allow your hips and pelvis to settle. Throw your belly muscles into your kidneys and root down through your tailbone and your feet. Feel the weight of your heels. Take your shoulders back 
and turn your body toward your right. Moving the pose into a spinal twist. And turn to the center, inhale, and with a nice exhale, turn your body then to the left. Don't worry if you're on the opposite side, it really doesn't matter, we'll do both sides. Come back to the middle, turn your feet parallel once again, and we'll squat towards your right foot. Keep your heels down for this variation of the pose, and your feet parallel to each other. And then move a little deeper, bend all the way down, your heel will pop up as if you're going to sit on your right heel. Turn your toes upward toward the sky. And to get a little more hip opening, hug your foot in as if you're trying to close the door, and then open the door at the top of your thigh. Close the door to your foot so you can open the door to your thigh and roll the inner thigh back. You see deep hip opening. Move your belly button back and down from your kidneys into the floor, so much so that your heel might come down to the floor on the right leg. Come back to the middle. With your feet flat, come into a parallel foot squat toward your left leg. Squeeze your foot down into the floor so you can lift your thigh bone up and back. Scoop your tailbone, root down through your water. And after another breath, turn your toes upward on the right foot, sit on your heel, and root so that heel comes toward or to the ground. Come back to the middle. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, stretch up. Bring your feet back to the center. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bow. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And exhale, bend your knees. Come to a seated position. Lay down on your mat. Grab behind your legs and roll so you massage your back. And then roll side to side as well. Lower your hips onto the mat and do some circles to massage around the sacrum. And reverse. Good. Place both feet on the mat. And then grab behind your left leg. Bring that left leg into a hug. And then flex your right foot so you're on the heel and slide that right heel out. As you slide out, tilt your butt down toward the floor. So you're leading with the inner thigh and press from your inner groin, inner thigh, inner knee, inner ankle, inner edge of the foot and press, sealing your right leg down to the floor. In fact, you can roll the side around your hip and widen that hip. Hike your sitting bone up and back so the inner thigh presses down, more fully sealing that leg into the ground. And then in the same way, use your abdominals, we've been doing this all day, drive into your water, into your kidneys, and push from your kidneys down the back of your leg and out through your heel, so your foot stays very flexed. Keep that, don't let that inner thigh spring up toward the ceiling, keep pressing it down toward the ground, draw your left leg and hug it toward your armpit, and then bring your shin vertical, and if you have long arms or you're blessed with flexible hips, you can take your hand up to your foot and hug that arm, hug that knee into your armpit. Draw the left knee down so that it would touch the floor next to your left armpit if you were flexible enough to accommodate that. Take three deep breaths. Surrender into that downward, earthy energy of each exhale. Using a strap if necessary, straighten that left leg. And hold your leg anywhere except right on the back of the knee. That's the popliteal area. It's a little sensitive, so don't grab it. And 
And let's move this into a twist. Take your left leg in your right hand. You can hold your leg anywhere that's convenient. Traditionally, you grab the big toe with two fingers. You can also take a thumbs down grip, thumb towards your heel, and grab the outside of your foot. That takes quite a great deal of flexibility. If you don't have that, use a strap, use a necktie, use a handle of a bag, or grab your leg lower. Keep your shoulder grounded. Left shoulder stays on the mat, and then roll to the side, bring your torso into a twist. Your left hip will come off of the mat, that's okay. Hug with your right hand, so your thigh bone moves from the heel to the hip, into the hip socket. And in the spirit of grounding, offer that left hip down towards your right heel. Take two more good breaths here. After your third breath, straighten your leg. Reach across with your left hand. Keep your right shoulder sealed to the mat and twist. And enjoy that deep release. There's almost an itchy feeling when those tight muscles surrender and start to release into the pose. It's definitely weird. If you have trouble keeping your right shoulder down, spiral your right thumb upward to a thumbs up like Fonzie. In fact, so far that your pinky might start to rise up off the mat. Continue to spiral inward on the left leg from your left hip point to your left inner groin. You're spiraling inward toward the mat. That way. So that you're pressing down to the mat with your inner heel, inner knee, inner thigh, and all the way up the hip crease. To the hip point. And turn to center. Bend your knee. Grab right behind both legs and rock to come up. And we're going to cut this part out so I can put my hat back on. Today. From that seated position on your mat, turn both inner thighs downward. Stretch your right leg out. Take your left leg and cross it over about where your knee is. If you let your knee flop outward, it tends to close the hip joint. 
So if we press down through the inner edge of the foot, which is the big toe side, and hug that left knee toward the midline, which is toward the right, we'll open and swing the base of the thigh, the femur where it comes into the hip, open. So hug inward, widen your inner thigh. In fact, use your hand manually, grab your sixth bone, grab the flesh, and widen it further to the left. Engage your abdominals and root from your kidneys. Scoop your tailbone into the space you just made between your sitting bones and root down to the mat, all the way through the inner thigh of your right leg and down along your body, all the way out through your foot. And this foot too. From that heaviness, feel the contrast. Lift your heart with the lightness in your upper body and then twist to look over your left shoulder. If that's hard for you, lean back. That opens up and softens the angle between your pelvis and your thigh bone. Or elevate your hips by sitting on a block or a stack of blankets. Return to the center and switch sides. Widen your inner thigh. Cross your right leg over and about your knee. And we're spiraling inwards. Follow that line from your hip point down to your inner groin, and that spirals inward towards your body, toward the mat in this case, and inward down from the inner knee, down from the inner ankle. There's pressure down from your big toe into your inner heel. Continue that pressure. Hug the midline with your right knee. Press into the inner edge of your right foot. Lift your belly. Lean back as much as you need to, and twist to look over your right shoulder. And your breath can become a little difficult during a twist, especially if you're used to breathing only in the belly. It's going to ask you by accommodating your belly. Your belly is all absorbed in that twist. So it's going to ask you to breathe wide into your upper chest and upper back. It's going to ask you to breathe three-dimensionally, not just forward, but backward from the spine into the upper rib cage. And you'll gradually learn the skill of breathing into other places in your torso. There's a lot of room to expand. Release. Keep this twist. Roll to one side. Grab your left foot with your right hand and draw that foot in. The closer your heel is to your hip, the less of a hip opener this is. So if your hips are tight, bring your heel all the way into your hip. If you're hips are less tight, you can begin to take your heel out until your shin is parallel to the top of your mat. If you're looking forward, it's perpendicular to that line. Do inward spiral manually. Grab the inner thigh and spin it downward, both legs. Again, lean back as much as you need to. Engage your belly muscles. Twist again to look over your right shoulder. Hugging that left knee inward so you can press 
through the big toe ball now in the inner corner of the heel on the left foot, flat into the floor. Now let your foot turn to the side. Press yourself into a little squat. Your heels may or may not come to the ground all the way, and that's fine. Take your squat a little bit wide so that uh, with your shins straight up and down, there's room for your body in between. So your legs shouldn't be together in front of you. Open those legs up a little bit so you can fit in between them. Put your hands on the ground, and we're going to lift your rear end about three times. Inhale, lift your rear end up. Your knees may not get all the way straight here. And come all the way down. Your heels will probably pop off the floor. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Excellent. Now, twist towards your right. Use your elbow. Press into your left knee and use your left knee to squeeze into your elbow. So you can bring more of your belly to twist around in front of your left leg. So you're twisting to look at your right knee. Bend forward and lean forward so that you go in between your legs with your head. And depending on how flexible your shoulders are, optionally you can take your right hand, put the back of your hand on your waistline, and slide it around. You can take your left hand around the front of your shin, not over it, around the front, slip it through, and your hands may or may not join behind your back. It's really not important. If it's that deep, you can use a strap to extend your reach and get those hands together. It really doesn't matter. Have both knees toward the midline and tilt your sitting bones back and apart. Engage your belly muscles back into those kidneys and root down, bringing more weight into your heels and scooping your tailbone down into the space you just made between your sitting bones. Awesome. Release. And switch sides. Use your elbow and knee against each other to create a little friction and turn your lower belly so that your navel and your lower belly face more to the left and twist your torso more toward the left knee. Lean forward, use your abdominals to curl, lean and curl forward so your head goes in between your legs. Hug the midline with both knees, open your sitting bones back and apart, those bony knots in your butt cheeks, and then root with your belly muscles back into the kidneys and down into the heels and tailbone. Take your left hand if you'd like behind your back, take your right hand if you'd like in front of your shin. Your hands may or may not make the clasp. And gaze out serenely over your left shoulder. And come back to the center. Bring your hands back to the floor. If your feet have turned out, turn them as parallel as you can. That's part of the widening and opening of the hips. Engage those belly muscles one more time into your lower back. If you can reach the back of your heels, go ahead and grab them, and bring your heels down as soon as possible in this movement. As you inhale, lift your sitting bones up, and as you exhale, return to your squat. Inhale, curl with your abdominals, so you're rooting down the back from your kidneys to the floor, and you're lengthening and curling forward with the upper body. And you root from here down, and you curl with the abdominals from here forward. onto your seat. Lean back, maybe even on your elbow, whatever's comfortable for you. Take your right knee in your right hand and stir the thigh bone in the joint. And just go both ways. And switch sides. Stir the pot. And reverse. 
shoulders. Right, so that should be passive with respect to your leg, active with respect to your hands. Lay flat on your back. Knees to the left, arms to the right. Enjoy a little twist. If you want to increase the twist, your front leg is your left leg. Take that left foot, put it on top of your right knee. Feel the heaviness of your spine downward into the floor. Release the weight of your skull. Release the tension from your neck and shoulders. Release your chest, your middle rib cage, the back of your rib cage and spine. Release your belly muscles, your short ribs on the side, and your lower back. If you need to, you can even lift your hips and lengthen the curve of your lower back a little bit there. Take your feet wide. Lean your knees against each other. Release your thigh bones down so they soften into the hip sockets. And let the weight of your knees and shins release into your feet. And the pressure will hold them there on the sticky mat. So there's a total release into the ground. Turn your palms up so your chest opens. Close your eyes. Allow yourself to surrender completely. Feel yourself returning to the earth. As if your body is turned soft. As if you're disintegrating and your cells are mixing with the particles of dirt and the rocks. of the grass and the trees delve down into the space that once held your body. And as the dirt moves in to mix with your particles, your particles move out to mix with the dirt, the lines become blurred, the boundary softens. The stories of all your scars are forgotten. scars erased, offered up into the dark, moist soil. And that space no longer smells like you. It smells like a rich, black, shovel full earth, freshly turned over. In the darkness is a totally clean slate.
yours disperse into particles. Dissociate. Dissolve into other things. Enjoy your next breath. Enjoy your heaviness. Enjoy the damp, earthy smell. Fresh in your memory. From that shovel full of dark earth. Gently bend your knees. When your exhale, roll softly to your right side. Take a moment to honor the beauty and simplicity of your practice today. Simply coming to the mat, showing up fully as whoever you are. you practice, into which we surrender our stories and memories and scars. Leave your eyes closed, come gently to a comfortable seat, place your hands together in prayer position in front of your heart. Honor yourself in the earth in the mixing of the two with one arm. Release your breath fully. Expand with brightness as you inhale. slate, the earth, the place to sink everything that no longer serves you and release it as an offering. And I bow to you with deep love and gratitude. Namaste.